All right, I go ahead, Ms. Angel. Your Honor, I, my fault. I don't know how this quite occurred, but we published more photos than I gave uh, Investigator T. Walt to look through. Uh, there okay. were thir 13 different. Um, I've since printed out the remainder of those. I don't know if we want to late file those additional 13, but they couldn't remain the same numbers because we had we subsequent more. exhibits after that. Yeah, you can always, you know, like do 455A if it's the same thing, but it might be easier if we just give them new numbers now. How many extra do you say? There's, you have 13? Uh, 13, Your Honor. Let's see, where did we leave up? So it'd be. You say 512? 12 through 24, I believe. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yep. So is there any objection to add these other 13 in that we actually showed the jury? Yeah, absolutely. There's two options. One is we can just move on with what we've got in the evidence. The other is if you want to move those in, if there's no objection from the defense, since we already showed them, I'll let them in. To, to leave them out? Leave them in. Yeah. Is there any objection to these additional 13? We're just on yeah, I got you. So what are these supplemental to? Which stack was it? This was uh, Jeremy T. Walt's photographs, Your Honor. And they were published on the overhead, but they weren't part of the package that was entered. Yeah, so T. Walt did uh, 481 through 510. That's the photo of the prints. Is that the one you're talking about? Uh, is that Finch? No, that was Finch. T. Walt was before, and he was uh, kind of a... Oh, yeah, okay. So, Sandy Campbell again, T. Walt. Uh, actually, I think it was T. Walt did 371 to, four, yeah, you're right, 371 to 451. And that was photos mostly of blood, but other things. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and let you file those. Uh, and introduce them, but I'm going to give them separate numbers. It'll be 512 through 525. 512 through 525. Yeah. All right. Ready, General? Yes. All right. Yeah. Bring it. All right, everyone, you may be seated. Does the state weigh the call, jury? Yes. Defense weigh the call? Yes. Welcome back, folks. Hope you had a good lunch. Uh, one bit of housekeeping in case you're keeping score on your exhibits. When uh, Officer T. Walt was testifying, you may have remembered we had a, a group of exhibits that were numbered 371 through 451. Uh, they purported to be photographs from inside the home at Golden View uh, Lane. You saw actually more pictures on the screen than were in that initial pack. And so I've decided to add 13 additional exhibits from that um, same series. You've already seen the photographs, but we actually didn't give them numbers. So now uh, exhibits 512 through 525 are additional photos uh, that should have accompanied exhibits 371 through 451. All right, so we're ready to resume the state's proof. General, if you please officially call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Rachel Sandlin. Swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in the case now on trial be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God. I do. Right, please have a seat, and you may remove your mask once you're seated. Thank you. Did you see
state your name for the record, please? Officer Rachel Sandlin. In November of 2016, were you working for the Sheriff's Office? Yes, I was. And were you assigned to the Forensics Unit? Yes, I was. And did you work uh, the scene of the guy homicides? Yes, I did. Can you briefly describe what you did in response to your call there? Um, I was one of the original responding forensic officers. Um, I photographed several items in the scene, several uh, the scene throughout. Um, Just one second. Sorry. I need to get that a little bit closer. Okay. Um, the entirety of the scene, photographed the entirety of the scene, as well as several items of evidence throughout, uh, assisted in um, collecting those items of evidence. And on on that day, majority just that, but then um, responded several other days as well to continue collection of evidence and photographing. And on November the 30th of 2016, did you have an opportunity to uh, uh, review some property that had been confiscated uh, in the property di division of the sheriff's office? Yes. And did you take photographs of uh, articles that you uh, inventoried at yes, that time? Yes, I did. In our forensic lab. All right. I'm sorry. And did you go back to uh, Golden View at a later date? December the 1st, 2016. I did. And what did you do when you were there on December the 1st? Um, on December the 1st, I responded to Cedar Bluff towing um, as well as the scene back at Golden View. Um, but as far as the scene at Golden View, I continued uh, to photograph additional items in the scene um, and continued to collect additional items of evidence okay. from the scene. On December the 3rd, 2016, did you uh, visit uh, a location on Hillside? I did. And uh, can you tell the jury what you did when you went to uh, that residence? Was that the residence of Michelle Dennison Tyler? Yes. Can you tell the jury what you did when you responded to um, her house? Uh, on the day of arriving at the 3824 Hillside Terrace Lane um, with Detectives McCord and Sanders. Um, I photographed individuals at the residence um, as well as photographing some items of evidence there. Okay. Did and you collected also DNA co swabs. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, also collected DNA swabs from individuals at that residence. All right. And then I want to direct your attention to December the 6th of 2016 and ask you if you uh, further photographed evidence that was collected in a property uh, at the sheriff's office. I did. I arrived at the property unit, um, the Knox County Detention Facility, the property unit, and photographed additional items of evidence that had already been collected. Okay. May I approach the witness? These are 11 photographs, and I would like you to look through those and tell me if you uh, recognize those. yours? Yes. Okay, and uh, can you tell the jury who was with you when you were uh, collecting these, uh, when you were taking these photographs? On which day? Oh, those On the, the 28th. On the 28th. Um, the entirety of everyone who was with me or just a... Yes. Okay. Um, there, <laughs> uh, several people there that day. Um, Officer Sandy Campbell. Um, Sergeant McKenzie Alleman, um, uh, Detective McCord was there. Um, Is it fair to say that all of you were working together? Yes. <laughs> and would you describe this as a simple scene or a complex scene? Quite a complex scene. All right. And uh, if 
I could, Your Honor, please publish these photographs that she has identified as being her own. Any objection? No, Your Honor. We're going to go through these very quickly, and just if you could just. 525 should be the next round. I'm going to be on 524. Can you describe what is depicted in that photograph? This would be the exterior view of the residence at 11434 Golden View Lane. Next photo. And the next one? This is an area directly to your left entering the garage at that residence, sort of breakfast nook type area. Okay. And were these articles taken into evidence and later inventory? Yes. Next photo. Including the wallet and the wallets that you see? Correct. Later inventoried and photographed. And I want to ask you to please tell the jury what this photograph depicts. This would be the stovetop display on the stove in the kitchen to the right of your entry from the garage area. And it's just depicting the state of the stove, stovetop, and positions of the knobs and such as I arrived to it and photographed it initially. The next photo. Does this indicate that the stove is in operation when you were there? Yes. On the previous photo, there's a hot cooktop light, and then this is the other side of that and appears to be in the on position. Okay. And the next photo. And could you describe what this photograph depicts? This photograph is a door that leads out to an exterior in the living room area. Is there a space heater that's also depicted in this photo? Yes, there to the right of the door. Okay. And do you recall whether or not that space heater was operating when you first arrived on the scene? I do not recall right off. I believe I have closer photographs of that space heater to determine. Did you see animal waste or signs that, I hope it's animal waste, but did you see signs of animal waste on the carpet? Yes, and I believe I have additional closer photographs of that. But, yes, as you can kind of see in the photo there. Next photo. And did you note the temperature? How did the house feel to you when you were there? To me personally, it felt warm. But it is our standard practice to photograph temperature. And so on whatever installed thermometers and such, and I believe there were two in that area, or one in that area and one upstairs. But, yeah. So that's our initial photograph of the scene before anything is. Next photograph. And is this another thermostat in the house? Yes. And what does the temperature read on that thermostat? 94 degrees. Okay. Next photograph. Now, did you go into the upstairs area of the house while you were there? I did. And did you go into what appeared to be a bedroom? I did, yes. And is this your photograph? Yes. And what does that depict? A laptop computer lying on the bed in the open position as it was found. And was that confiscated? Yes. Next photograph. And can you describe what is depicted in this photograph? This is in that same bedroom, the dresser area in that bedroom. Appeared to be gloves, some cards that were later inventoried and photographed further. And the jug to the left of the screen, what was that article? That is the proper description. Did you collect it? We did, yes. Next photograph. And this next photograph, does that depict a close-up of the cards that you 
photographed? Yes, prior to collection. And then uh, there's further photographs, lab photographs of them. All right. Next photograph. Okay. Now uh, we're going to move on to uh, November the 30th when you went to the. Uh, May I approach the witness? Okay. And where did we leave off? 536. Okay. And there are 12 photographs here. Yes. What was that last number, Judge? Uh, 537 to What does this photograph depict? The label that we've created um, in our system to track all of our evidence and item number nine, um, a purse and contents, including money. Okay. Next, and it indicates if you could go back, just where it was found and. Correct, and yes. Lo uh, location of recovery, officer recovered, um, okay. date and time recovered. All right, next photo. This, what does this depict? Um, that would be everything removed from the bag, um, just an overall photograph before photographing the contents in detail. Okay, next photo. And what does this depict? Just an overall view um, into the item before removing any items and photographing them in detail as well. Next number. Uh, this? The wallet removed uh, from the previous purse. Number. Uh, or, well, checkbook opened up, um, just kind of an inside view of that checkbook. Okay. Next number. Uh, just a further spread out view of what exactly was in there. Uh, and do those appear to be deposit tickets? Yes, tic deposit tickets, yes. Forms. Next number. Um, once those deposit tickets are removed, just an overall view of the um, check book there, viewing the last Next number. slip on there. Did you actually find any checks in that wallet or in the checkbook? They would have been photographed had you yes. found them, right? Yes. Okay. And can you describe what this photograph depicts? Um, an item of paper um, in the purse before removing it to see further detail. Next number. That same item of paper, um, just laid out for a better photograph. Okay. It appears a to be a grocery list, common okay. grocery We've list. We've got a screen there. Can you read what's on the grocery list? Uh, beer, bacon, sausage, Ben and Jerry's pistachio, dog, snacks, uh, gain, OxyClean, and stain remover. Okay. Next number. A Walmart receipt. From the purse. Enlarge that. Yeah. And that was found in the, in the purse, is that correct? Correct. And uh, can you read the date on that receipt? 11 26 16. And the timestamp? 12 18. And where did that uh, receipt originate? What's, what's the Walmart. Uh, it would be Walmart at uh, Parkside Drive. Thank you. In the Turkey Creek area. Next number. 
that's just a close up of the same thing. Correct. The date and time usually December? just. Is that it? Okay. And if you just can just leave the lights down, Judge, because I've got several more that uh, we're going to. And we left off at. Yes. Can you identify this? Um, that, is, uh, that is the laptop computer um, collected from the scene. Okay. On the 28th. I don't know, Next I number. number. <laughs> the attached uh, drive has depicted in the original scene photos as well. Okay. And did you detect any reddish brown staining on this article? Yes, there appeared to be um, okay, next it's a very small amount. Is that a closer depiction? Yes. And that would be Exhibit 552. And so we'll look at 553 next and through uh, 554. Can you describe what's depicted on this uh, evidence sticker? Um, that would be item 92, um, as well as the general description of the item of evidence of collection loca location, um, officer recovering, and uh, date and time as well, and then location of recovery. Okay. And is that location the guest bathroom in the residence? Correct. The upstairs hallways, uh, hallway bathroom. Okay. Next number. Can you tell the jury what this photograph depicts? Um, just upon opening the bag itself, just a overall photograph of the contents inside before photographing anything in further detail. Okay. And the next photograph is uh, 555. And what does that photograph depict? Um, a container of uh, red skin potato salad from the Walmart deli. Okay. And again, that was found in the guest bathroom in the Walmart bag. Correct. On the, yes. on the kitchen, on the counter, in the bathroom. Is that correct? correct? In the hallway bathroom. Yes. Okay. Now I want to direct your attention to Exhibit 556, I think, and ask you if you can identify this. Um, item 37, collected by Officer Campbell. Uh, again, just an overall, like our description label okay. uh, with where, contents. Where are where? What are you? Uh, these items. What's the location of this? Um, so these items are in the foyer floor, the uh, main entry to the home, um, grocery items that were found there at that front door inside of the residence. Okay. Next number, which would be 557. And what does that photograph depict? Um, an open bag and then an overall view of the contents inside before any further photographs okay. are taken. And does that appear to be luncheon meat? It does. Okay. Smoked turkey breast. Direct your attention to the next photograph, which was 558. And uh, was that also found in the foyer? Correct, in the groceries. Uh, sausage. Jimmy Dean sausage. 
could that also be described as a perishable item? Yes. The next number. As many is of the items were in the groceries. It's 559. Um, three packs of bacon, uh, again, amongst those grocery items in the foyer. 560. Uh, again, just an overall view of what is in that evidence bag before further uh, detailed photographs. So, 561. Uh, appears to be Ben and Jerry's pistachio ice cream and Mayfield brown cow's uh, ice cream. Again, perishable items found in the groceries. Okay. And uh, we'll go on to the next exhibit. And again, these are things that you photographed on November the 30th of 2016. Is that correct? Yes, inside the forensic lab. All right. <clears throat> so can you tell us uh, what is depicted in exhibit 562? Um, it's a maroon backpack. I would have to find the exact item number in there, but uh, just an overall view of that maroon backpack before any contents are photographed or removed. And 563? Uh, just an open view of the front zipper pocket and the contents as they lay. 564? Uh, close up, just to depict that there is a appears to be a calculator in that uh, pocket. 565. Um, that calculator removed and an overall photograph of it. 566. Um, the calculator has removable cover, so that cover is removed in just an overall view of that calculator. Okay, 567. Um, an overall view of the uh, larger pocket of the backpack um, opened and photographed. 568. Uh, close up view of um, what appears to be an instruction manual in the backpack for a residential gas water heater. 569. Oh, Uh, is that just a part of the same document? Yes, uh, an anatomy of the gas water heater. Okay, 570. Did you look for a date and time stamp on that? Yes, and uh, because that? it appears to be a printed out um, item. So uh, we photographed that, or I photographed that. And, uh, and that would be November 23rd, 2016 at 4.12 p.m. All right. We want to go to 571. Uh, again, another overall view of the items within the larger packet pocket of the backpack. Okay. And uh, can you describe what you see in that photograph? Uh, there were multiple books um, and a uh, notebook with a pen. Um, All right. Going to go to 572. Can you uh, describe what this photograph this would be that black. Excuse me. This would be that black notebook um, from the large pocket of the backpack laid out. Um, just an open view of it and what appears to be the first item of content. Um, just a syllabus appears for uh, a class, um, Madness and Medicine. And is there a time, any way to distinguish the time for this? Under syllabus, is there a date? Or? Yes, uh, syllabus from fall 2016. Okay, 573. Um, it appeared to be mathematic homework or um, problems, math problems. Okay. 574. Uh, a, like a standard Scantron type sheet for uh, test taking. And 575. A uh, blue book from a co-op bookstore in uh, Baton, Rouge, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, excuse me. All right. 576. Turn that around. These would be the items in the large pocket of the backpack um, 
laid out for display since they're once you open it there were multiple books and things so um, everything from the well and the calculator from the front pocket everything from the backpack laid out and an overall view to see the contents so that picture depicts the contents of the backpack correct okay 577 is that um, just a closer close view? up of the umbrella and the um, calculator from the backpack and a couple of the books 578 um, a cord and mouse and a couple of the books from the backpack just again some close-ups 579 a close-up of the uh, notebook from the backpack 580 um, a content page of the notebook from the backpack okay can you increase the size on this please and you've got a screen um, would you uh, read from your screen please what is depicted on this page of the photograph you took yes get killing knives quick multiple get is carving that quick, or is that quick q u i quick. is that a c or is it an e Quiet. Yes, it could be. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, it appears to be an ET. Yes, um, multiple. Get carving knives to make small pieces. Get sledgehammer. Crush bones. Bring blender and food grinder. Grind meat. Keep going. Get bleach. Denature proteins. Get plastic bin for denaturation process. Keep going. Does not matter where they're killed. Just get rid of bloody spots to prevent evidence of time of death, not the mattress or the couches. Get rid of bodies inside house. There and my DNA already there. And then there's a part that's scratched out. Open up doggy door to provide entryway. Can you make out the? Uh, it appears he needs to be. And I can't make out that word. Okay. Um, not intruder. Next line. Um, flush chunks down toilet, not garbage disposal. Get plastic sheeting for disposal process. And then the part that's crossed out. Get hollow point bullets just in case. Will be seen buying bullets. Just use computer room gun. Check to make sure there are bullets. Last resort. He's not alive to claim her half of the insurance. Money, and then an arrow, all mine, 500,000. Flood the house. Covers forensic evidence. Turn heater up as high as it goes. Speeds decomposition. Bleach reacts with luminol, just like blood. Douse area with bleach. Big sprayer. Lie. Trash compactor. Body gives time of death. And an arrow. Alibi. Don't have to get rid of body if there is no forensic evidence on the body. His fingerprints and DNA. Okay. Next photograph would be 581, Exhibit 581. And if we could enlarge that and just read from the top, please. Yes. <clears throat> Minimize things I touch throughout visit. Wear gloves and socks to prevent fingerprints and footprints. Drop something down the garbage disposal to break it. Get him on the ground fixing it. Kill him with the knife. Clean up mess from him before she gets home. Kill her with knife. There's a part that's crossed out. Kill dog after. What's and then above that? leave alive. Can't read her. You're able to zoom in there. Okay. And the It appears to be fingerprints. Okay. Uh, and then take dog with you. I can't read the first word. Him with him is in parentheses. Okay. 
The next line. Place her in shower, and then with dog appears to be crossed out. Turn on hot water and point at her to get rid of forensics. Remove her clothes and take them with me for disposal. Place him in plastic bin and use it to get him into the upstairs bathroom. Cut off his arm and plant his flesh under her fingernails. Place her hand with his DNA so that his DNA is not washed away by the shower. Use sodium hydroxide to destroy his soft tissue and soften bones for transport. Baste once every hour to accelerate. Flush sodium hydroxide down the toilet. Wash out bin with handheld shower head and then direct handheld into toilet to flush everything out of the pipes and into the public waterway. Douse killing rooms, kitchen with bleach. Place hair curler with flammable paper and flammable containers of gasoline in four locations. His killing room, her killing room, his bathroom, her bathroom. Wipe down areas near killing rooms and bathrooms. Turn heaters up to 90 degrees to melt fingerprints and dry everything. Set her phone to send me a text message late Sunday to prove that I was in BR and she was alive, in quotation marks. Leave, and I can't read the words it's marked out, through front door and wipe down doorknobs. Timer for flammables set for Friday at 10 a.m. Sunlight masks fire, but not smoke. Everyone at work, so they can't report it. I'm going to show you photograph 582 and ask you to. The next one. If you could enlarge that, just read what is depicted on in this photograph. Ultraviolet light shows fingerprints. Check mail before leaving. To get rid of blood, use peroxide, and there's an arrow um, stating hemoglobin per pointed at peroxide and bleach, and then an arrow DNA pointing at bleach. Okay. And photograph 583. It appears to be titled Destruction of Bodies um, and then Composition of Body, 20% fat, 20% protein, 55% water, and 5% other compounds. Okay. Could I have just a second, Judge? Thank you. Could you turn the lights up? Five eighty four. Uh, it appears to be titled Assets, um, Her Assets, Her Life Insurance, Five Hundred Thousand, Possibly More with Double Indemnity. With him missing slash dead, I get the whole thing. All her other assets are joint. Go to him if missing, unknown if he is dead. His assets includes all joint property if missing. When he gets all joint property, also gets joint debt. Knoxville House, homeowner's insurance, possibly but probably worthless after fire, owe 100000 the Sir Goinsville House, appraised at 400000 plus, worthless with Renee on property. Me. Her car, his SUV, and that seems to be bracketed, not paid for, 
um, his boat, his old truck, and that seems to be bracketed with paid for. His 401k, 80,000, possibly less after, zoom in on that word. Can you zoom in? Could it be taxes? It very well could be, yes. Okay. And the next line? He could possibly have savings and or investment accounts. So uh, the next exhibit would be 585. I'm sorry, next number. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was okay. Next. Okay. Okay. I'm finding the folder for. Um, if I could have just a second, Judge. Officer Sandlin, you were on, uh, you were at Golden View on November the 28th and uh, in the subsequent days. And uh, based upon what you just read, did you find evidence at the scene that corresponded with things that were noted in that writing? Yes. And did you, did you, uh, did you think about that when you uh, were doing this inventory search and when you discovered this notebook? Yes, we, the um, back was, backpack was collected as is and then later obviously photographed in the lab. Um, and upon reading the things in that backpack, they corresponded to several of the items that um, were collected by us and throughout the house. By you. Yes, observed and collected. Okay. Correct. Yes, now, as well as the, I mean, observe the temperatures and such that okay. photographs. Okay. Now I want to direct your attention to uh, the. Next days, which would be uh, December, December the 1st, 2016, and I'm going to show you uh, Exhibit 586. Is it 585? Oh, because that was the same one. That's right. Okay, 585. And ask you if you can uh, identify this. Uh, this is a photograph of the fireplace in the living room area at the Golden View address. Do you know? What will go on? Oh, it doesn't matter. And was there a reason that you took a photo picture of this? Uh, upon returning to the house after, uh, uh, this is the... Well, let me show you the next photograph, which would okay. be Exhibit 586. Oh. And, uh, so just an overall view, then, the first, the fireplace before um, observing any sort of um, its condition. Okay. Were you aware whether or not the pilot light was on when officers first went into the scene? I am not aware. Okay. And the next number would be 587. And what is that a photograph of? Uh, that is the uh, water heater. It is um, in the upstairs area in one of the bedrooms in a closet. Now, on December the 1st, did you uh, have an opportunity to go to uh, Cedar Bluff Towing? I did. And what was the purpose of that visit? Um, that was to photograph um, a red Kia Sportage bearing Tennessee tag, uh, King 1898 Union. And did you know that to be uh, Lisa Guy's vehicle? Yes. Okay. And uh, if I could publish Exhibit 588, is that right, Judge? I always get. And what does this five, exhibit 588 depict? Uh, just an overall uh, view of said vehicle. Okay. And exhibit 589? 
um, an open door view of the uh, driver and passenger seat. Just describe, I mean, is, what is your process when you're photographing a car? Do you, what do you do? Um, I photograph the uh, entire, I walk around the vehicle and photograph the entirety of the exterior of the vehicle. Um, and then opening each door and just kind of photographing an overall view um, of the inside of the vehicle from each angle of the doors, um, the condition of the vehicle, what items maybe in the vehicle, um, just an overall views before doing okay. a more thorough photograph. Of and so that's the front interior of Lisa Guy's vehicle? Correct. Okay. The driver's seat. And so exhibit 590, if you could describe what this photograph depicts. Uh, that would be the rear interior of um, the same vehicle. And exhibit 591. Um, items in the floorboard of the vehicle. Okay. And did you collect those items? Did you look through them? Uh, look through them, um, which the, the back could be de depicted in uh, photographs. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, let me show you exhibit 592. Um, so receipts from those um, items. So did you find those receipts inside the bags that was in, in the rear interior of Lisa Guy's car? Yes. Okay. And if we could enlarge these a bit, and uh, Officer Sandlin, could you note the, we get that large enough, can you note, they, they're from PetSmart, is that right? Correct. Uh, yeah. Is that also the, on Parkside, Parkside area? Move up to the top there. Yes. Okay. And down at the bottom, if you could just note the uh, the dates and the times. Uh, um, the first, let's start with the one on the left. November 26, 2016 at 1126 a.m. Okay. And to the right? November 26, 2016 at 1123 a.m. So she appears to have made a couple of purchases just a few minutes apart. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Now, uh, On December 3rd, I believe you uh, said that you went to Michelle Dennison Tyler's house. Is that correct? The 3824 Hillside Terrace Lane. Yes, correct. And did you take photographs there? I did. And you've seen these photographs, is that right? Which is correct. Pretty, yes, I showed you these two. So I think we're at exhibit 593, and I want to show you exhibit 593 and uh, ask you if you recognize these photographs that were taken on. Uh, if you can describe what's in these photographs that were taken on December the third of 2016. Uh, this would be an just an overall facial photo of um, Michelle Dennison Tyler. Okay, and. Exhibit 594. Uh, I also photographed her children, so this is just an overall facial view. One of her children? Yes. And Exhibit 595. Again, an overall facial view of one of her children. Exhibit 596. And a third overall facial view of one of her children. Exhibit 597. Um, an overall facial view of her, um, I believe he was her boyfriend at the time. Okay. And Exhibit 598. An uh, overall view of several items at the residence um, on Hillside Terrace Lane. Okay. And Exhibit 599. Uh, a more in-depth photograph of some of those items. <clears throat> Do those appear to be toys? Yes. Next exhibit number is? I can't. Um, and few really in good at math. <laughs> I got good to count any for and, and can you describe what this photograph depicts? Um, that would be the tote opened up and a view of the uh, toys inside. Okay. Do those appear to be Beanie Babies? They do. Company. 
Okay. Correct. All right. Now, um, there should be a four minutes of two. And on December the 6th, 2016, um, did you photograph the plastic Sterlite totes that have been just introduced into evidence in this case. I did. And yes. some cans, gas cans. Correct. And uh, I'm going to show you exhibits 601. And can you describe the contents of this? Um, a photograph of. Um, one of the totes that had been previously collected um, from the Golden View address, um, a photograph of it at property. Okay, exhibit 602. Uh, the label attached to the aforementioned tote. Okay, and does that contain a barcode on it? It does. All right, exhibit 603. Another view of that same label. Also a barcode? Correct. Exhibit 604? Um, a zoomed in photograph of the barcode and um, staining on the label. Okay. Exhibit 605? A, um, another sticker attached to the um, tote. Okay. Is there a reason you took that photo? Just to document anything that is on the tote. Um, okay. Exhibit 607. Oh, I, I'm wait. sorry. 606. No. Um, the wheels on the tote as appear to be depicted in the sticker attached to the tote. Okay. Exhibit 607. Um, a label seen through the, um, it's a bio bag that's on top of that. Okay. Um, and a zoomed in photograph of the uh, barcode. Okay. Next number, 608. Same. Um, yeah, a zoomed out view of that, the entire label. Okay. Uh, exhibit 609. Or is it, six, yeah, 609. A uh, photograph of a gas can. All right. And is, if you, can you zoom in on the number? With the, with the... Were you present uh, when these, or did you have an opportunity to observe where these gas cans were when they were uh, first seen at the Golden View address? At the original scene, uh, yes. Okay. Where were they? Do you remember seeing them in the garage? Yes, I've. Yes, I don't know if you were a specific okay. or a specific location as the collection. And uh, is this a number that uh, was placed by someone with the sheriff's office? To. I do not know. You don't know. You didn't no. number it. I did not. Okay, um, but does that number depict number one? It does. Okay. So I'll show you exhibit 610. It appears to be number two. Number two. And exhibit 611. I'm sorry, I'll keep going. Go to the next number. And if you could zoom it in. It appears to be number three on that one at the top. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And do you recall whether or not all of three of these tubs were five-gallon tubs? Do they appear to be similar in size and labeling? They do appear. Okay. All right.
various items and, and on various dates and uh, times. Uh, did you also collect uh, evidence? I did. <clears throat> I want to try to start with uh, things that you collected on the 28th. I want to direct your attention to November the 28th. permission to move freely unless I and I just want to show you a couple of things uh, Marked the identification is exhibit 612 and ask you if you can. Can you describe? Uh, this is? Yes, this would be for us item collection item number 51 um, collected by myself um, at the Golden View address um, item C at the landing at the top of the stairs. It is one uh, cook, messer, stainless steel, or stainless kitchen knife. Okay, can you uh, open that and mm -hmm. briefly publish it to the jury? And do you remember uh, other articles that were uh, located around this knife? Yes. And can you describe what the, while you're opening that, can you describe what those other articles are or were? Uh, there were several items of clothing um, and um, chemical items as well. Okay. Was the clothing, uh, can you describe the condition of the clothing? Um, it had staining, multiple, um, it was, um, pile. there was a pile of clothing um, that was actually atop the knife, um, the, stain, the clothes had staining as well as um, several um, what appeared to be cut marks. On the clothing. And did you notice the condition of the carpet uh, that was around the clothing and where this knife was found? Can you describe the condition of the carpet? I did. It also um, appeared to have staining. I want you to pick that up. But if you could just like stand up and uh, stand here, I am going to give the jury an idea of the size and shape of this knife. Okay.
and uh, 613 for identification, if you could describe what is depicted on the outside of this packaging. Um, this would be item 52, also recovered by myself. Um, it's for us, well, it's labeled item D, um, also at the landing at the top of the stairs in the same area. It is two empty containers of number two sewer line cleaner. Um, the marketed weight is six pounds, eight ounces. And were there actually four of those containers? There were. And Correct. was there also a container of aerobic drain cleaner with them? Correct. Yes, there was. So can uh, the state move uh, 613 into evidence, Judge, and we would ask that she be allowed to show the jury the contents of the bag? Correct. Correct. <clears throat> so uh, I next would like to show you what has been marked for identification as Exhibit 614 and ask you if you can describe what is depicted on the packaging. Um, this is collection item 74 collected by myself. Um, at the Golden View address. Um, it was marked as item T. Uh, location is the master bathroom. Um, and it's cut off here, but I believe it's the right sink. Um, and the evidence is one emerald large kitchen knife. bathroom in the right sink. Where the bodies were found. Correct. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you. First, let's uh, let me show you what has been marked for identification as Exhibit 615, and ask you to describe the uh, packaging label. Um, this is item coll collection item number 61, collected by myself um, at the Golden View address. Um, item K in the master bedroom or master bedroom floor. 
and it is one unopened Pure Health Discounts Certified 35 Food Grade Hydrogen Peroxide. Item 61 was that. Um, item 62 um, was another of the same. And item 63 um, was another of the, sa of the same. Um, and also two glass dropper bottles. Okay. So three total. Three total of those. Okay. Correct. In that area. Yes. Right. Uh, now I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 616 and ask you if you can... Uh, <clears throat> Um, this is item I in the master bedroom floor. It is one unopened gallon jug of liquid fire drain opener collected by myself. Okay. And we would move this into evidence and ask that she be committed to publishing. been marked for identification as Exhibit 617 and ask you if you can, um, do you recognize the um, package? Can you describe? This is uh, item W that we would have labeled and collected, um, collected by myself um, on the guest dresser, or on the dresser in the guest bedroom. It is one box of opened VWR medium nitrile gloves. We would ask to introduce this into evidence to publish it to the jury. Not objection, this is so easy. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification purposes as Exhibit 618 and ask you if you can describe what's depicted on the outside of this packaging. 
Um, this is item AA in the closet in the guest bedroom collected by myself. An unopened package of Clorox brand gloves. So this is in the closet? Correct, of the guest bedroom. This is item X from the dresser in the guest bedroom, um, collected by myself. It is an opened Pure Health Discounts certified 35 food grade hydrogen peroxide bottle. sticker to uh, denote the possible presence of uh, biological fluids. So this area. So the photograph from that time probably would depict its condition in a better shape. Than yes. It, uh, okay. it has since been processed for fingerprints. So. This is item W uh, for the dresser in the guest bedroom, and it is six miscellaneous cards um, collected by myself. Does the first card appear? Can you read to the jury what what it is? It's a U.S. Bank's Perks Plus Visa signature card uh, belonging to Joel M. Guy. All right. And uh, this next card? Uh, it is a Home Projects uh, Visa card belonging to Joel Guy. The next card? A SunTrust Gold MasterCard belonging to Joel M. Guy. The next one? A Platinum uh, National Rifle Association Visa belonging to Joel M. Guy. This next one? A Discover It card um, belonging to Joel M. Guy Sr. Is, it, is there a signature line on the back? There is. So that's what the signature line says. Okay. And this uh, next one? 
It is a Bank of America, uh, Bank AmeriCard, excuse me, Cash Rewards MasterCard belonging to Joel M. Guy. Identification is Exhibit 621 and ask if you recognize the packaging. Uh, yes, this is item Z in the guest bedroom floor um, collected by myself. One blue disposable glove. You don't need to look at that. It's similar to the latex gloves that we've seen in the uh, yes. photographs. show you what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 622 and ask you if you uh, can describe the sticker on, on this to recognize it. Yes, this is item um, AA, labeled as item AA. The closet guest bedroom is the location. It's two plastic Walmart bags with Bayco work light. We would move this into evidence, Judge. I'm not going to ask to publish it. The jury can but again, this was found in the closet, right? Correct, in the guest bedroom closet. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 623. I'll ask you if you can identify that. Uh, these are two pill bottles from the guest bedroom dresser collected by myself on December 2nd. Is that December 2nd? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's kind of out of order, but this wasn't on the 28th. This is when you went back. Uh, okay. Correct. That's what okay. the time demands. Yeah. We would have moved this into evidence. Again, these were found clear. On the uh, guest bedroom dresser. This one is a uh, omega-3 acid um, capsules, and um, the prescribing information is uh, Joel Guy, 5075 Nicholson Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That, that one is from Baton Rouge. Correct. Is the other one identified? Um, it does not have a label. Right. Is there anything else in there? I'm sorry. In, in these? This is labeled for us as item CC uh, in the on the bookcase in the guest bedroom. It is four prescription bottles, um, Joel M. Guy, and one prescription bottle for Lisa Guy. Identifying information on the uh, prescription bottles as to each one? Yes. Uh, this is prescribed to a 
Joel M. Guy um, with the address of 11434 Golden View Lane um, and his Cipro Flow Flow Axum. So it's a Knoxville address? Correct. Okay. And the next one? Uh, this is also prescribed to a Joel M. Guy, uh, 11434 Golden View Lane, Knoxville. Uh, prescribed to a Joel M. Guy, 11434 Golden View Lane, Knoxville. Uh, prescribed to a Joel M. Guy, 11434 Golden View Lane, Knoxville. <clears throat> and this one is prescribed to a Lisa Guy, 11434 Golden View Lane, Knoxville. And these again were found on, in the guest bedroom. On, on the, the bookcase, book yes. identification as exhibit 625 and ask you if you can describe the uh, contents of uh, this exhibit. Uh, this is from the closet uh, in the guest bedroom and it is Pure Health Discount Certified 35 Food Grade Hydrogen Peroxide. Okay, so was this an un We're going to move this into evidence, Judge, and ask to... Uh, do you recall whether or not this was an open container or a closed container? I do not recall. Okay, well, let's go ahead and open it. Okay. Then. But again, it was found in the guest bedroom closet. Is that correct? Correct. It appears to be uh, in its sealed bag within the exterior bag. So, yes, it appears to be unopened. Okay. Now, in the closet, in the master bedroom. I'm sorry, guest bedroom. Correct, the guest bedroom closet. <clears throat> Um, this is for us, item 154. It is um, one Walmart receipt. Um, and the location of recovery um, is from the Walmart bag of trash. The label's cut off. One minute. Um, from the Walmart bag of trash beside guest bed slash guest bedroom. We would ask to introduce this into evidence, Judge, and to publish it. Um, and it is a Walmart receipt. The date is November 24th, 2016, at 619. Is that military time? It appears that it... Does it have an A or a B next to it? It does not. It appears that it's probably military time. Is it, read the, the digits out loud, please. 06, colon, 19, colon, 41. Typically, how military time is depicted. So, 6:19 in the morning. Yes, in my okay. experience. Um, that's fine. You can put that back. 
This is the Walmart at Parkside Drive. And again, this was found in the trash in the guest bathroom. Right. Um, in the, it is from the Walmart bag of trash beside the guest bed in the guest bedroom. Is anything else legible in terms of what was purchased? the prices and item numbers, but the actual description of the item numbers are a bit hard to read at this point. Here you go. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna show you what's been marked for identification as exhibit number 627, and ask you if you can describe what is depicted on that exhibit number. Um, this for us would have been item 155. It is a Toastmaster timer, model 12 925, serial number 1617080. Uh, the location of recovery was from the garage wall outlet. It has instructions on the back. Um, it is a uh, timer device uh, with a plug-in. In the garage, found in the garage. Correct. Did you find any other timers in the house? No. Did, uh, did you observe any? No. I believe there was a sealed one in the. Um, a sealed one? I believe. the hose um. okay. <coughs> All right. now next I'm going to turn your attention to what has been marked for identification as exhibit 628 and I know we've just seen photographs of this but uh, I would ask you if you can identify it as being the same um, backpack that was depicted in the photographs we just saw yes Judge, we would ask to move this into evidence and to publish uh, the contents of it. Take a recess. We'll come back and hear further proof from this witness. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or anyone else. You can leave notebooks and chairs. Please go to the office. Ten minute recess.